Welcome back to Repiquance. This is Michael Merle. It's September 9th, 2024, and we're back with another crypto market update. All right, let's get to it. Bitcoin. Ha. Well, it's been a crazy week, and we've dropped even more. On the chart, you see the expected move range in light orange. I'm colorblind a little bit. Green, red, orange, always my soft spot. But I think this is orange. <laughs> the lighter ones, the lighter lines are the ones from last week. So you see the expected move range, right? And the dark orange <laughs> is, the <laughs> is the new one. I already put it on there, okay? And once again, if you are one of the uninitiated, you can find this fantastic crypto expected move range right here at bit.ly crypto underscore em ranges. You can access it, it's publicly shared, and you can find any coin, well, the top, how many do we have? Let's say 220, 239 top coins, right? I actually filter by liquidity and uh, some other criteria. I don't want anything that's just too tiny, right? So this is all coming from Binance. I run my scanner every week and this is what it spits out. Okay, among many other scanners that I run. And the expected move range, well, what does it represent? One more time. It's based on historical price volatility. Normally, implied volatility is used for calculating the expected. Implied volatility, basically, why? Well, because in the options market, in the futures market also, implied volatility is really a product of the pricing of options or, fut or futures contracts. So it's kind of a backwards, right? Volatility affects the price because volatility equals risk. So in the options market or also in the futures market, when something has high volatility, it usually, well, always actually, causes the premium, the price to rise. Why? Well, things get more expensive when there's more risk associated to them, right? If, you, if I sell you something, it's more risky to sell you something, right? I could lose money selling it is because, you know, I'll have to buy it back. Well, then I'm going to price it higher. Very simple, right? And inversely, things get cheaper. If volatility drops, if there's less and less risk associated with it, well, then there's going to be other, other sellers who want to sell me something. And if I want to buy it, well, I have more choice, right? So it's kind of, it's like a, you know, supply and demand kind of thing. And so traditionally, that's how it's done. But with crypto, there are now sources for institutional traders. I've actually valued it some, <clears throat> have not implemented them into my workflow yet. So in the meantime, I'm using the poor man's approach to calculating the expected move range. I do this very effectively on the stock side with my strategies for my trading activities, selling, for instance, strangles, things like that. And I've done very well with that over the years, actually, and other strategies, you know, butterflies and um, iron condors, what have you. And it's always based on what I see in the options chain, right? What I see in terms of volatility. And I wish I could have that already for the crypto market, but it has to do, in a nutshell, with the challenge of structuring options contracts on the crypto side, because there's so many coins. And if you then have so many option contracts in conjunction, right, that also expires, it, it just it just goes crazy. It's just too much. So the market would be too thin and they're still trying to figure this out. With the futures contracts, they have effectively solved that. Why and how? Well, perpetual futures, which was really a smart idea. Just basically, you know, setting up a premium, hmm, requiring a premium to be paid by the opposing side. If the futures market is running away upwards, you know, then you basically have to longs pay a premium to the shorts and the opposite, right? Because there need to be an incentive. So that's how to basically keep the price in check. And that's how to keep the price in alignment with the cash market, which is, of course, in this case, Bitcoin or Ethereum or what, what have you. But does that make kind of sense? Do you have a rough understanding of what I'm talking about? Because when I talk about expected move range, well, what is it based on? You know, well, in this case, it's based on real as well, tell you. With this other way, to give you a good understanding, you see two expected move ranges right now, right? The lighter lines, orange, I think, <laughs> are from last week. And we started the week here, right? Somewhere around here, I think. That was the beginning of the week. And you saw how much range we had. And that was much larger because you see that actually the low one has barely moved. Hmm, interesting. Since then, this one has gone from here to here. How come? Well, because we had less volatility. We have dropped. But all in all, you see actually deflation of realized volatility. Again, that's based on one standard deviation, 
So it's basically 68.7% probability that we stay within this range. And obviously we have. I mean, the ranges are so wide at this current moment in time that the odds are probably a little bit higher. But, you know, that's the algo and we're sticking with it. So moving forward, okay, what do we have for this week? Well, look at this line, look at this line. And we're basically looking here at around 51,200 and 58,000. So the, the, the range has really moved a little bit, right? He has dropped and he has also compressed. That tells us a few things about the market. It's actually becoming less volatile, although it feels like it has become more volatile because we have dropped, right? Everyone's looking always at, at direction. And direction, there's more about the market than just which direction it moves, right? It's always a matter of probability because what has happened really it doesn't matter, right? That's in the past. What we should be focused on is what will happen in the future. And what we have here is now thresholds, which are very important. And again, they line up so nicely. See, last week they lined up here. This was the inflection point on the upside. And this week it lines up here. Again, see that, how it touches? And again, this, this was done algorithmically. And I mean, had I moved this manually, I probably couldn't have put it in a better spot, right? In terms of figuring out where upside resistance is going to be. And it's going to be right there. Where? Yeah, 58,500, somewhere around there. And if we push above that, if we actually manage to, this week, hmm, until Sunday, if we manage to heave the collective crypto carcass, <laughs> that's actually kind of nice. I should put a trademark on that. The collective crypto carcass, if we can heave it above this, right here, this, this threshold, then we're actually going somewhere. Until then, we're going nowhere, honestly. Well, unless we drop below this, and then I think it's goodbye Kansas, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to probably drop, well, I'd say probably in, in mid-40s or something. I don't, know, I don't know. I mean, at this point, we're in this chop zone, and I think we're not going to see anything really decisive. The most decisive move I've seen so far that we have all seen has already happened when we dropped below 50K. And I think that's really where hmm, the rubber meets the road on the bearish side, right? Until then, it's just all scaring the children. That's all, okay? Let's also look at Ethereum real quick. This is going to be really interesting because what I actually foresee right now is kind of a settling right down here. And maybe there's going to be a little bit of a retest. I mean, unless we drop and then the whole equation changes. But think about this. While we stay inside of this, in this range here, what's going to most likely happen is that it's going to start compressing more. It's going to bounce around more. And then let's think forward, right? Because as a trader, that's what you need to do. What happens next week? Well, when I do the same exercise, right? You know, I'm going to change the colors again. And then you're going to see the next expected move range, probably even compress even more. Maybe not by that much, but quite a bit. And at some point, we're going to be coiling up to the point where we break out. Boom, it's just going to take off. And then, you know, the next day, you're going to see a headline on Zero Hedge or wherever. Bitcoin rallies as X and X and X. Some excuse, right? That is completely irrelevant, honestly. Or it might happen on the opposite side. It might happen as well. So if we see a drop after such a compression, it's probably going to be big. But, you know, normally drops are big anyway after something like this. Because why? We're building support here as well. So this is a double-edged sword, right? If we drop through the support, all this support here, see, this used to be resistance, not support. And the expected lower thresholds, EM, let's just call it EM ranges, right? So the lower EM threshold, it's kind of accumulating here, right? So this was last week, this is this week. And unless we're making a big move, there's going to be another one very nearby next week. Hmm? So we're building quite a bit of support here, which really lines up very nicely with this and this and also this. See that? Right. And that means when it pops, it's going to go big. So that's my perspective. Let's do a quick look at total three. So I drew these lines ahead of time for you. And you can see that, well, we're still nowhere here. Altcoin took it a little bit on the chin over the last week, but not as much. So I'm kind of watching this and thinking, hmm, this is kind of interesting. I actually expected altcoins to be hit a little bit more. Now, yes, we did drop. But given what we saw in Bitcoin and Ethereum, I thought we would be seeing more downward momentum here. But so far, nothing. So, hmm, interesting. We almost already recaptured what we lost. So I think this is going to be an interesting week. So it's going to be fun. All right. A quick update, by the way, for all of you subs. Got some good stuff. <sighs> Veritas is live. I put a lot of work into this, guys. And um, again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Veritas is my trend signal. It's crypto trend signal, crypto season signal, so to say. It tells you one of four things. We're either in cash mode, you know, cash season, which we're in right now, actually, right here. 
Or we're in Bitcoin, or we're in Ethereum, or in altcoin season. Ah, I love altcoin season. But we're not there yet. And I did a hell of a testing. I had a lot of testing for Veritas. Also for Gravitas, by the way. But we'll talk about that some other time. Here we go. This is the chart. And it's actually, you can see it <laughs> when you click on this link as a subscriber. So you have a report you get every day, obviously, right? And it tells you what season you're in, very simple. Yeah? And how long you have been in the season. So this basically has been for quite a while already in this particular configuration. And by configuration, I'm talking about various settings that I use for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and also total three, which I had to recreate. So this is the graph right here that I just showed you, which you saw linked in the alert. That's what's being generated by the configuration. And, you know, to be honest, it's actually not the most profitable ones. The, there were ones which were much closer to 40K. But I'm not just looking at just net profit. I'm also considering the stick with it factor, which I brought up last week. Last week, I talked about the SWIFT and that it's sometimes difficult for retail traders, for people who are not really professional traders who are who haven't been around the block a few times, to stick with the system because it's just drawdowns, right? Drawdowns shake out a lot of people. Some people are just psychologically maybe a little bit more fragile when it comes to enduring deeper drawdowns. Some of us are more resilient to big drawdowns. I mean, you know, you got to give it to the crypto community. They've been through hell and back, right? But still, if I want to offer a signal to my subscribers, I need to find a middle ground between wildly profitable, but more volatile and, well, not volatile at all and being less profitable. So I found a middle ground. And also in terms of the balance between the seasons. And here, what you see right now is the signal over the last four years and how it has performed. And this is really important to actually keep an eye on this. It's built its way up. It really took great advantage throughout the entire bull market here, all the way into late 2022, even during this correction here, which I paid a lot of attention to. And this is actually starting at $1,000. This is quite crazy, actually, if you really think about it. So you can scale up in your mind, right? Had you put 10,000 into it. And again, it doesn't go short. This is basically just tells you if you are either in cash, Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins and it doesn't pick the altcoins for you this goes by total three hmm? performance of total three if you want altcoins that's a different system we can talk about that some other time but i thought it was really important to kind of tell you at least okay the getting is good here the getting is good there and oh you should just be in cash i think it's really important for the average trader and i didn't see anything out there and i see people on reddit and other forums constantly guessing uh, are altcoins going to perform? You know, what's with Bitcoin? Why are we in a new bear market? I mean, people were talking about the crypto bear market when we were around you know, 65,000. And so I said, you know, this is ridiculous because trying to pick the tops and bottoms all the time is just a fool's errand. And it never works for people, for most people. There's only a few people I've ever met in my life who are professional traders who are able to even get close. And this gets as close as possible, I think. And it does a great job. And it really, as you can tell, yeah, it took a little bit of a hit here during the bear market but it really escaped almost unscathed, given the context here. And I really like this configuration, especially it really took massive advantage of the recent bull run. And yeah, it took a little bit of a hit here, took some of it back during that run up here. And now it's kind of like settling out in cash for a while. So that's what it's doing right now. And I can actually show you, this is Ethereum versus Bitcoin. This is Ethereum versus USD. And this is basically Bitcoin USD. So I'm using actually the comments, which tells you positional navigation more accurately than just a sensor or just an algorithm by itself. And I actually kind of repurpose that for as an indicator. And it works extremely well. I used it for Gravitas, and Gravitas has been just kicking ass and taking numbers for the last two years. So I incorporated it also into Veritas. And I love it. So these are my settings, and that's what I'm going by. And the outcome is basically that. Price point, I don't know yet. I'll make it cheap because I think it's something everyone should be having access to, really. So it shouldn't be something that's so priced out that it's too much of a hurdle. I want people to use this very effectively and at least not get wiped out during the next bear market. And also much more pressing, I think, uh, take full advantage during the next bull market. All right, that's all I got for today. Hope this was uh, entertaining and informative and see you all next time. Cheers.